Hello and welcome back to another episode of Keys Schools. This is a rather special episode because it's the first in something new for the channel, a kind of season, or a mini season really, uh, on a specific topic. And the topic is admissions tests, as, you, as you'll have seen from the title. So we're going to have uh, some videos, well firstly from me, I'm the admissions tutor at Keys. my name's Chris. Uh, you'll probably have seen me before if you're a subscriber to the channel. If not, hello. Um, I hope you find this video and the others on the channel useful and do please click subscribe if you do. Uh, there's plenty more coming up, including the other videos uh, in this little season. Uh, so we're going to have some undergrads next week talk to you about their experiences of admissions tests, how they found them, any tips, both in general and then for specific admissions tests, specific subjects too. And then on top of that, we're going to have some graduate students uh, go through some past papers uh, in videos for you uh, and talk about how they would have attempted some of the questions uh, and how best to approach them. So that's what we've got lined up, but this is the first video. This is me talking to you about why we have admissions tests and how we use them in selection. So I'll get straight ahead and do that. Now you may have seen, if you're familiar with the other videos on this channel, I've done a video on the, the kind of entire Cambridge application process already. So do head over and check that out if you want to see how admissions tests fit into uh, the entire application process. The main thing to stress is that we take everything into account. We treat each applicant as an individual. So the admissions test is just one element that we use when we're making our selection decisions. So decisions about which of you, if you're applying to Cambridge uh, and to a particular college, to make an offer to. Now I'll bring up a list in a moment of the current pre-interview assessments uh, that we run and then a more complicated list of the at interview assessments that kind of varies by college. But I'll say a little bit first about why we run these tests. So as you may know, uh, most schools or all schools really used to do AS levels before A levels if there were um, if there were a school that offers A levels. Obviously some of you might be watching and, and doing an other exam systems which is absolutely fine. Um, AS levels don't tend to happen anymore. Some schools still offer them but most don't. And so when students apply, they're often applying with just their GCSEs as the last kind of formal assessment that they've taken. And we recognise that students can develop a great deal in the sort of, what, 16 to 18 months um, between taking their GCSEs, or 18 months rather, and then actually applying to Cambridge. So we like to have uh, something extra in certain subjects to give us a sense of where you are in that subject now as you make the application. So that's the rationale behind admissions tests. And the best way for you to think about them is as opportunities rather than hurdles. So you may have heard, if you've seen some of my other videos, you may have heard me say this before, but I think it's very true. And that the reason we have all these steps in a Cambridge application and an Oxford application too, um, is that we want to give you as many opportunities as we can for you to show us why we should be making you an offer. Um, so don't think of all these extra steps that we, we put there for you as, as kind of hurdles that you've got to go over with reluctance, um, but they're there as opportunities for you to show us what you can do. And that's very much the mindset with which you should go into an admissions test, as, you know, this is a chance for me um, to show the college I'm applying to how good I am and why um, they should be taking me. So practicalities, a list is hopefully coming up next to me on the left of all the admissions assessments that we run. Uh, at Cambridge. Uh, now this list, please be aware, it's, it's accurate now and it almost certainly will remain accurate for this application season, so um, we're, I'm doing this in October 2020, but if you're watching this video uh, in 2021, please don't rely on this list, check the undergraduate study website, there's a link in the description down below. But here you go, at the moment these are the subjects for which we have pre-interview assessments. Um, so I'm going to be talking about both pre-interview and at-interview assessments in this video. Pre-interview assessments, you sit um, before the interview, uh, maybe that's obvious. Um, for all of them, apart from the BMAT, you register on the 15th of October, but again, sometimes that advice will, will change, so if you're watching this after the date of recording, then check the website. I won't keep saying that, I'll just take it as read from now on that you understand that. Um, so you then sit them this year because of the pandemic uh, on the 4th and the 5th uh, of uh, November. So do check um, the website for which of those two dates your particular admissions test will fall under. And you sit them in a registered test centre. Um, your school should be one. Uh, if it's not, uh, then you can invite your school to apply to become a registered test centre. 
Uh, you can also go to another registered test centre and I'll put a link down below for, uh, with a map for all the test centres in your area and you can look up and, and go to one. So as you'll see, we, we run more at interview tests now than we do pre-interview tests. Uh, there's not a huge amount of difference between them really. Uh, we're testing for the same kinds of things, so seeing how you think, how you can take the uh, existing subject knowledge that you have from the course, so we're not testing knowledge really, we're not going to expect you to know anything beyond your, your A-level or equivalent syllabus, and in fact a lot of the admissions tests are using GCSE knowledge, but we're testing how, how you can go beyond that, so how you can think of what you have um, and think flexibly and think about something new in a new way to, to reach an answer. Now while pre-interview assessments this year are going to be in person at test centres, at interview assessments because interviews are going to be remote as well so you're going to have your interviews if you're invited to interview uh, in the, the place essentially in which you feel most comfortable whether that's your school or your home uh, the same will be true of at interview assessments so they'll be remote as well now the exact details of how each of these admissions assessments the at interview assessments are going to work uh, will be circulated to you once um, and if you're invited to interview the exact platform they're going to be on, how exactly they're going to be invigilated, if they are going to be invigilated, etc. Um, but that's all you need to know for now. So do be aware if you're applying for one of these subjects um, that's in the top part of that table uh, that you will have an at interview assessment. If you're applying for a subject in the bottom part, make sure you're aware from your college website, the college you've applied to, um, whether or not you're going to need to do an admissions test. And if you've made an open application, um, be aware that the college uh, you've been assigned to for one of those bottom subjects may require an admissions uh, and an at interview assessment. Uh, so do check that as soon as you can. When you know your college, you will be made aware of it as well. Okay, so that's probably quite enough um, on the practicality side of things. So what are these tests actually testing? I've talked a bit about that. We're testing really for academic potential and your ability to go beyond um, your existing knowledge. Um, how do you prepare for them? Uh, well, that's quite a hard thing to prepare for actually. Um, so it's, we'd hope that a good, good preparation is going beyond your subject and developing your subject's interest, um, not just now in the immediate run-up to applications, but over the last few months and years. Um, so you'll be used to, to sort of going beyond your, your subject in that way and you've developed a genuine um, passion for and interest in the subject for which you're applying. That's very much something that we're looking for, that genuine um, subject interest. Um, but there is lots too that you can be doing now in the immediate run-up to the test to prepare. The most important thing you can do, and the thing that's actually been proven in a, in a study um, to a, be, be of real tangible help, uh, is doing a practice um, pass paper under timed conditions. So there are pass papers or specimen papers or both available for every single pre-interview assessment um, that we run. Um, that's probably, table has probably disappeared now, so I'll stop pointing to it. Um, but do uh, have a look at the, uh, the website, the, the CART website which runs our admissions tests. Um, I will put that another link down in the description for you and you'll be able to find the past papers, uh, download them and have a go and as I say do it under time conditions. And research is showing that people uh, who take these tests who have done at least one past paper under time conditions on average perform better. So that really is a big help to you. These are freely available resources, the past papers are available to everyone, so if you don't take one, you are kind of putting yourself at a disadvantage. I very much encourage you to do that. Equally, you know, don't, don't burn yourself out. You want to be fresh for these tests. You don't want to have done three or four um, past papers in the three or four days immediately running up to the test because they are testing your mental flexibility, testing how you think in relation to your subject. So if you've worn yourself out, you're not going to think on your feet as well as you might otherwise have done. So it's finding a balance. Don't prepare, prepare, prepare. Okay, find a nice um, relaxed balance between the two. And I mentioned the word relax there, and it's important to be calm when you're going into these tests. And you can be calm by knowing what to expect through looking at the past papers and through looking at the syllabus. And knowing, perhaps more important than anything else, that these tests are designed to sort, sort out the very best um, of students in the country and in the world who are applying to Cambridge. We get very, very strong applicants. And you will be used, in, in terms of your public exams, to, setting, uh, to sitting rather tests that, that kind of test everyone and try and sort out the whole range of ability levels from uh, right at the bottom to right at the top. And our admissions tests aren't interested so much in people down here because those people won't be applying to Cambridge because their predicted grades won't be high enough. People who are applying to Cambridge are right up here. So we're setting you tests that are really going to sort all of you out. 
So no one is going to be able to answer every single question. It's very, very unlikely that they will correctly. Um, so be prepared for that. And if you can't answer every single question, and you are two or three questions in, and you get stuck, don't panic and be prepared for that. Um, and move on to the next one. Take your time over it. Uh, think about how you might approach it. Okay, so it's just knowing beforehand, really this is the best preparation, knowing beforehand what to expect so you go in and you remain calm in the test and you represent yourself as well as you possibly can. So there you go, that's Cambridge Admissions Tests in a very brief nutshell. There's lots more I could say, but I'll leave it to our undergrad students and our postgraduate students to take you through some general tips, as I said earlier, some specific tips, um, and to go through some past papers with you. Um, but I hope that, that gets you uh, interested, if you, if you haven't yet really realised you're going to have to be doing these tests, interested in looking at these resources that are there freely av available for all, started to think about how you're going to prepare for them. Um, I'd also like to flag that on our website, as you might have seen me say before, if you're a subscriber, we have this new um, chat to our student facility. Um, do go and chat to some of our current students online in subjects which, um, studying subjects for which they will have had to have done an admissions test. They're people that would be very happy to, to talk to you about their own experience and give you some tips too if you want that kind of one-on-one -on -one advice. So do do that. As I say, subscribe to the channel if you like this video and you want to see both our admissions test resources and more resources that are coming soon, including taster lectures, advice for interviews, and so on. Uh, but I'll leave it there for now. Uh, take care. See you soon. Uh, all the best.